simple way it's through the blood of Jesus Christ there is still that song said the blood help me out Renee said it will never lose its power the blood that cleanses every the, sin the blood that cleanses every sin never will never lose its power and I just want to give God praise tonight and if it can be an encouragement to you all to know that there is still power in the blood of Jesus Christ and no matter what the problem, no matter the, the burden that you may be carrying for others or the struggles that you are having in your individual life tonight, there is a solution and it's in the blood of Jesus Christ. So we're going to take just a little bit of time and we're going to take a scriptural journey. All right, so we're not going to spend a lot of time and just preach on one passage, but I want to go through some of the scriptures and see what does the blood of Jesus do? Where, what is it, what's the power? What is its value? Because, see, it's sin that separates people from God. True. It's the enemy that comes in and, and drives a wedge. But the scripture in Romans 5, verse 8, and you can help me quote it, it said, but God commendeth 
his love toward us. That while we were what? While we were, say it with me, yet sinners, Christ did what? He died for the ungodly. In other words, we didn't deserve it. We didn't do something that earned it. But when we were still in sin, Christ died for the ungodly. Do you know this tonight then that all of the people that are still in sin, that God, Jesus Christ, is loving them and that's the reason they died. He died. So when we see the repulsiveness of sin and we see the pain that people around us are causing because of their life, remember this when you look on them, Jesus died for them. Who are we to look with this stain on a world that is lost? Because if it had not been for the grace of God, where would we be tonight? If it weren't for the grace of God, I can tell you I would not be here tonight. But it was because Jesus looked forward and He saw Michael. (laughs) He saw me and He saw you and He thought, I love them and I'm willing to die for them. And that same love is reaching out to all of the lost today. And when we say, is there any hope? The answer to that is a strong yes, there is hope in the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood is the solution because it is the blood tonight that will break the power of the curse. It's the blood of Jesus that breaks the strongholds that the enemy has in so many lives. So Romans chapter 5, verse 9 then. See, verse 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And then verse 9 says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So where's the power of the blood? We are justified by the blood. To be justified means to to render free or innocent. Where we were guilty, guilty of sin, guilty of wrongdoing, guilty of death, it was through the power of the blood of Jesus that we are justified or made innocent. Do you know that's divine? There's nothing we can do to be good enough, but when we come and we plead the blood of Jesus, it sets us free and makes us innocent where we were guilty. And it said, it also, we are, shall be saved from the wrath. We are saved from that sentence of death that was upon all of us because of sin. It is the blood of Jesus that will protect us from the wrath that is going to come. When we stand before the judgment seat of God, God is not going to look and say, well, who's righteous enough? Who's righteous enough? He's going to look for the blood of Jesus that justified us and redeemed us from sin. And if the blood of Jesus has been applied and He's been walking in that power, God's going to look on and say, I see the blood of my Son. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. It's through the blood that we're saved from the wrath to come. Everywhere, remember in Exodus, when the death angel passed over Egypt, he passed over every house that had what on the doorpost? The blood of Jesus. The blood of the Lamb, rather. Everywhere the blood of the Lamb was applied on the sides and on the top of the doorpost. When the angel saw the blood, the death angel passed over. That is our freedom tonight. This is the reason why we do not need to fear death. This is the reason when these that have died recently, and they've, been, they've served the Lord and they've gone on, we, we weep. We mourn their passing, but we don't weep as those that have no hope because the blood of Jesus was applied. The death angel passed over and we know that now they've entered into a glorious place. Ephesians chapter 1. And we're just taking a little bit of a journey to see the power of the blood. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. It says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We have redemption. What does the blood of Jesus do? It redeems us. We have redemption. This is similar to what's, and this is in many different verses, 
When Jesus was setting the ordinance of the, of the Lord's Supper in the book of Matthew 26, he said, this is my blood the new, of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. You know what it means for something to be for someone to be redeemed? You know what that word redeem means? What's it mean? Bought back. It means purchased. Do you know that we were in sin and we were slaves to the devil, but because Jesus died on the cross, he gave himself, he gave his life for ours and he bought us from sin to set us free. Isn't that wonderful tonight? When we wonder, what, what am I, you know, am, am I really say I don't feel free. Do you know that the blood of Jesus sets us free? It's kind of like a, a slave that had been brought to the auction block and someone came and gave their life for that slave and that slave was set free. That slave had been redeemed. And there might be times that slave might say, well, I, I don't feel free. I don't. It, the price has been paid. Someone took your place. Jesus took the sentence of death for me and for you. All of the wrong that we committed, Jesus took that. And we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And when we sing the song, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, what we're saying is, I've been bought. I've been purchased back from sin and from the, the stronghold that the enemy had. We've been set free tonight. If the blood of Jesus has been applied. And he also said it would be for the forgiveness of sins. It does not matter what sin is in someone's life tonight. When they come and they repent and say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. And I don't want to ever go back and I turn away from it. It is a divine work of the blood that forgives and releases from the penalty of that sin. You say, how does it work? I confess to you, I don't know how it works, but I know it works. It's kind of like the blind man said. He said, I don't know exactly who that is, but I know this. I was blind, but now I see. And you say, how do you know there's power in the blood? I know, yes, because I read it in the Word, but I have experienced the forgiveness of God. I've been, I've been set free. The things that had bound me, the things that would bind me today, I have power over them through the blood of Jesus Christ. We don't need to be afraid of, of all of the, the sin and the power that's out there in our world. Yes, we need to have a respect for what it can do, but if we stay under the power of the blood, we have the authority tonight to say no to the devil. We have the authority to say no to the world. We have the authority to say no to the flesh because there's power in the blood of Jesus. I look at all of the heartache that sin has brought. And people wonder, is it even possible for me to be forgiven? Yes, we are forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord for that. Galatians 3 verse 13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. He redeemed us. This is more than just being saved from the inconvenience of having to offer a sacrifice. This, we have been set free from the curse of the law that we can actually go and do as Jesus said when he told the adulterous woman, Go and do what? Sin no more. We could not do that under the law, but we're not under the law now. We're under grace and we're operating under the divine power of the blood of Jesus. And when people come along and as they will in the world and say, you just think you're so righteous, you just think you're better than everybody else, our answer to that is without reservation, no, we're not better than anybody. And no, we're not living this kind of life through our own strength and our ability. It is all because the power of the blood of Jesus is doing for me in my life what I cannot do for myself. And it wasn't only when I came to the altar and got saved. It's today. How can you do that? It's not me because I'm struggling against temptation. But there's a power that is greater than me and greater than you. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ. And so when the devil comes along, what do we say? Just point the devil to the blood. <laughs> point him to the blood. The devil hates the blood. 
You don't hear a lot about it in other religions anymore because the talking about blood may not seem real savory. But without the blood of Jesus tonight, we would still be in sin. It's the blood of Jesus that redeems and sets us free. 1 Peter 1, verse 18. It says, For as much as ye know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and as gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We are not redeemed with corruptible things. Do you know that these four walls are corruptible? Yes. These four walls are going to fall down. The church is not this building. This building is going to fall down sometime. This building is going to burn up. All of the degrees and all of the education and all of the spiritual knowledge in our head, all of the good deeds that we might do, or all the money in the world cannot bring redemption. We are not redeemed with corruptible things, but we're redeemed, as the Scripture says, with the precious blood of Jesus. Thank God for that tonight. So when you begin to think, well, am I, am, am I doing this good enough or do I? It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about what the Lord can do in you. It's his power and his blood. Thank God. Something else the blood does. Revelation 1 verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, of the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Do you know there is power in the blood of Jesus to wash us from our sins? Have you ever washed something and it didn't come clean? I had a, there was a man I knew that he owned a cleaning he owned a cleansing agent. He was a very wealthy man in California, and he, he sold it. It was sold in some specialty shops. Some you would know if I named them out. And it was high-dollar stuff, and now it's another company bought them out, and you might be able to buy it at Walmart now. They, they put their name on it. We knew the man that my father knew him well. Uh, the man that owned that came up with that. Do you know it was something we had in our, in our laundry room for years? We went to see him, and we were given a, a lot of containers of this. At the time, it was zout. And it's like if something wouldn't come out, you just put a little bit of zout on it, and it would come out. Do you know the blood of Jesus can take the, mo the dirtiest yeah. and most defiled stains in people's lives? And the blood of Jesus can cleanse it. Yeah. It can wash it. Do you know what it's like to be really dirty? The other day or a few weeks ago, someone came, two, two men, a man and his son, came to our house to pick something up, some scrap metal. And they came to pick, some, pick it up, and they walked by, and I, it was all I could do to... I had to hold my breath. The smell was so bad. I don't know how they could live that way, but they were both of them. They smelled, they were dirty, they stank. It, the stench was horrible. Mm -hmm. And then they went and climbed in their truck, and I looked at Ethan and was like, how can people live this way? Mm -hmm. But do you know, all of us in sin had a stench. Yes. And we look today on people that are doing such vile things. But who am I? To hold my nose at them. Because if it weren't for the blood of Jesus, I'd be just as unclean. But we have hope to offer to people. That those men that stink so bad, I had a solution for them. If they would have just gone in and taken a shower, gotten some soap, they could have come out smelling good. Would have burned their clothes and given them some new clothes and they would have smelled good. Do you know that's what the blood of Jesus does for the sinner? There's hope for the sinner. It can cleanse, it can wash you. But also in 1 John 1, 7, it says that the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. 
It does the full job. It doesn't just take out one spot and leave another spot. The blood of Jesus has the power tonight to cleanse us from all sin. Everything that will separate us from God, there is power in the blood of Jesus to wash us and not only wash us, but make us clean. And it's all through the blood of Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? People say, what does the blood of Jesus do? If we just gave a little summer, well, it justifies it saves us from the wrath of God. It forgi- There's forgiveness in it. There's redemption in it. It's the price that was paid for us. It washes us. It cleanses us. But you know, that's just part of it. When I get done with this message, you may have other things that come to your mind because there's a lot more that it does. The blood of Jesus has not lost its power. There's something else. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Do you know when, when we were in sin without Christ, we were aliens? We were foreigners. We, we didn't fit in. We didn't fit in. We were, we were Gentiles. We were strangers. We were separated from God. But this is what happened. He said, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Those that have been far away from God can be brought back by the blood of Jesus. And it breaks my heart when I see people walking away from God. Breaks my heart when I see people that have been, especially our children and young people that have known the ways of righteousness and to see them walking away from God. But I want to tell you, all is not lost. All is not lost. Because when the blood of Jesus is applied, those that were afar off are made nigh to the blood of Jesus Christ. And the Father is just out there with His arms outstretched waiting for His children to come home. And there's enough blood to cover all His wayward children. All the ones that have walked away thinking they're going to find it for themselves when they come to the realization that I've lost it and it's not out here. The blood of Jesus is still waiting and there's enough at the cross that we can come back. And if I can just get one drop of that blood... That blood, that one drop will just cleanse the entire man and where I was distant and I was separated from God. And I was uncomfortable around godly people because it brought condemnation on my life. When they get ready, if this world is still standing and time is still here, if they will just plead the blood of Jesus, they will be brought back in to the presence of God. So I say to all those that are burdened with lost loved ones, pray on, because the blood has lost none of its power. Thank God. Isn't that wonderful? Thank God. Something else the blood of Jesus does. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot. See, He offered Himself as a sacrifice. It's because He loved us. He said He shall purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Do you know there's power in the blood to clear your conscience tonight? When you look and you feel guilty over all the things you did in your past, all the people you hurt, the rebellion, the sin, the fleshly living, all of the baggage because you walked away from God, the blood of Jesus can cleanse your conscience. There is therefore now no what? Condemnation Condemnation or guilt to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Thank the Lord. So the blood of Jesus can give you a clean conscience. There's something else. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. And this one you don't hear maybe as much about. He said, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Some say, well, I thought that was the Holy Spirit. The blood of Jesus is a sanctifying agent. 
To sanctify means to make holy. It means to set apart. When the blood of Jesus has been applied, it sets us apart from our sin. It sanctifies us. There's a purifying power in the blood of Jesus tonight. Something else it does, and this was the the root of the message where it took root today. Told you a brother called me and he'd been praying a lot for me and he checks up on me every once in a while and see how I'm feeling and I'd had a, I was down over half the day yesterday with a horrible headache and he called we were he was texting me and then he called me and he said brother Michael he said I just I want you to know he said the price has been paid yes. it's about all he said and hung up started thinking about it he was talking about the blood yes. Amen. the price the provision it's there it's been paid 1 Peter 2.24 Who his own self bear our sin and his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness and it says by whose stripes ye were healed primarily it's talking about spiritual healing It's talking about healing of the inner man. But make no mistake this morning, it was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53 and the disciples pointed to that scripture when Jesus went about healing all manner of disease. And they said it was as was prophesied by by Isaiah. By His stripes we are healed. There is provision for the healing of the body. It is true that God does not always choose to physically heal, but He always chooses to spiritually heal. But when we are sick, I know where to go. I know where to go, and I don't have to wait in line to get help because I know where to go. There is provision in the blood of Jesus. And it encouraged me to know that, that if, if I don't get the answer at the time I'm looking for, I know every, all the ingredients are there. If I can just let my faith ascend to the Lord and get hold in faith, believing that, Lord, I know and believe in your perfect will. But I still believe when we pray for those that are sick and we evoke the name of Jesus and plead the power of the blood, it means something tonight. It means something to plead the blood of Jesus. And pleading the blood of Jesus goes way beyond just when we got saved. There have been so many times in my life that I pled the power of the blood of Jesus to enable me to overcome temptation, to overcome myself, to find physical healing. I know I've told this story before, but when I was jerking so badly and it wouldn't stop, it was getting to the place I about couldn't operate anymore because the jerking was so bad. And, and I remember I was on my way to Canada and I, Renee had, had to take me in a wheelchair to the airport. And I was in my room that evening and I was down on my knees crying before the Lord saying, Lord, I can't stand anymore. I need some help here. And the Lord gave me a vision of the blood of Jesus just being applied to my whole body. And you know, from that time forward, the Lord eased that up. He took off the severity of that. I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. How do we overcome the enemy? This is another one of the great powers of the blood of Jesus. You can find it over in Revelation 12, verse 11. They overcame Him, talking about the enemy. By what? Now, it goes on to say some more things, but we're going to stop with the blood of the Lamb. They overcame the enemy. How many times has the enemy come in and battling you? What do you do? I'll tell you what to do. Plead the blood of Jesus. When you rebuke the power of Satan through the power of the blood, he's going to have to flee. When you are struggling with something in your mind, ask the Lord just to apply His blood to that place in your mind. That's a way to overcome temptation. We overcome the devil. Yes, the devil's real. Yes, temptation's real. Yes, the flesh is real. But greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world tonight. And it's because of the blood of Jesus. So let's use the tools at our disposal. The blood of Jesus heals It enables us to overcome. It enables devils to be cast out. It's not through our righteousness. 
It's through the blood of Jesus Christ when it's applied, the devil has to go. So if you're struggling tonight, I want to encourage you, take hope. If you're struggling, be, be of good courage. It's not about you. But if you will just open up your heart and ask the Lord to apply His blood. And again, I am so thankful it's not just for the sinner. But I'll tell you what, there's a lot of saints that need healing of the mind, of the emotions. People that have bitterness in their life, do you know the blood of Jesus can take away the bitterness? Have you found it to be so? I found it works. It's not what we do. It's the power of the blood. Power. The blood has lost none of its power. Two more things before we close. Hebrews 10 verse 19 to 22. We'll just read one of them. It said, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Do you know what that means? We can enter in tonight to the very presence of God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Before, you had to go to the priest. And only the high priest could enter into that most holy place. But tonight, each and every one of us, young and old, can enter into the presence of God for ourselves because of the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood tonight. And last but not least, and there's a whole lot in between that you can go study on your own, Revelation chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. One of the elders answered and said unto me, What are these that are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white by the blood of the Lamb. There are tribulations tonight and there are crosses to bear. But saints, we will make it through the tribulations of this life and one day enter in to the joys of heaven with our robes having been washed white because of the blood of the Lamb. So I just I trust it will be a blessing and encouragement to you tonight. I am so thankful for the blood. And I don't ever want to lose... The passion for what the blood of Jesus is. We can talk about doctrine and well we should. And we can preach about careful living and well we should. And we can talk about the church and well we should. But there, when I get before the throne of God and I stand before His judgment seat of God, I have no righteous of my own. I can't say, well, Lord, I went to the church of God there in Springfield, or I knew brother so-and-so, or this is my heritage, or Lord, I, I dressed this way, or Lord, I didn't do that. No, my plea is that the blood of Jesus has been applied. And that's what God's going to be looking for because it's the power of the blood in this life that enables us to live like God wants to. It's the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood. There's a song that I'd like us to conclude with. If some of you that know it want to come help sing it, um, I claim the blood. I, I don't know where others turn. I don't know where others turn. I don't know what everyone else does. But folks, we can claim the blood tonight. I claim the blood. I have The song says, I have a source of strength when I am weak. Sing it with us. I have a source of strength when I am weak that takes me through when life is pressing me. I have a source of power from. I'm coming.